Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined by a child of the light without question. Chris DeVecchio. Chris, what is up, my brother? How are you, man? Hey, man. How you doing? It's awesome doing to great. have Chris here today, guys. So let me give you guys his uh, bio. Him and I have been talking <laughs> off air, and it's like, man, I, I know this dude's soul. Like, We go back a long ways, but uh, we literally, this is the first time we've met actually in person, but he is a health and wellness coach, entrepreneur for 20 plus years who helps people achieve health and happiness. He's notable for winning a $1.2 million weight loss prop bet and also authoring the five by two method. And he is the owner and designer of Mobility Wall, which I have, and he sent to me. Thank you for that, my brother, which me and my wife use now every single day. We're going to be talking about this amazing tool. But Chris, man, it's an honor to have you on the show today, brother. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Great to finally connect. Awesome, man. All right, so let's talk. Let's jump in and talk about Mobility Wall and really just wherever this conversation goes. But um you, when in creating your, the mobility wall, um, you basically have combined self development and, of course, fitness training, um, which services high level executives um, seeking balance in their day to day lives. As the, to the audience, so they know this, like in speaking with this guy, I'm like, this guy is really centered and very balanced out. And then, you know, we were talking just again, like for 15 or 20 minutes off air before the show started. And it's like, He's wearing the same clothes as me. I mean, it's like, what is going on? Like, so it's like, I told him, I'm like, bro, we're like inner circle. Like I, we got to do, you know, connect and, and become even much closer beyond this today. But, uh, like I said, man, it's an honor to have you here is I know now like where this planet is going. Like people like us are all just finding each other consciously because it's the resignation of our vibration. Yeah. So it's an honor to have you here today, but yeah, just get into, you know, talking about why you built this and where you intend to go with all this. Yeah, you know, Mobility Wall is um, it, it's a product that I came up with, you know, in the in, in the midst of, you know, I, I have a health and wellness coaching business. I work with clients all over the U.S. and Canada. I have some clients internationally as well. I, I Ideally, the, the clientele that I typically work with are high level, you know, entrepreneurs, successful executives, people who have spent their lives building their wealth and success at the expense of their health and wellness. And now that they've got this incredible infrastructure set up in their lives with all the things that they've really worked hard to achieve, oftentimes what they're finding is that they're missing that, that health component. And so, as you and I know, you know, nothing has any value if you don't have your health and that's, that's right. first and foremost. Right. So, um, and, and we can, we can talk more about the program and, and how I work with clients and, and how that's, you know, how I facilitate all that. But in the midst of all that, you know, movement and mobility is a really, really important part of my program. You know, there's a, a saying that I love that, Age does not dictate how we move. How we move dictates how we age. And, you know, I find that most people that are coming into the program lack really healthy movement and they're very limited. And so the beginning of our journey usually starts with identifying imbalances in the body, uh, identifying movement uh, inhibitions and prioritizing that we get their body moving well so that they can exercise well. Because if someone's shoulder is rotated forward and, and they're thinking about going to the gym and lifting 50 pounds over their head, we know that it's just a matter of time before they run into trouble. Um, and traditionally, you know, foam rolling and soft tissue work has been around for over 20 plus years, but, you know, inherently people are not usually that compliant with that type of work. They don't find it very sexy. Or, or fun or even effective to do because getting on the ground to foam roll, which is the tr conventional way of foam rolling, you know, is, has been really difficult and challenging for a lot of people. So they don't, in, they don't engage with it. They yeah. don't find the, the value and the benefit. And so I came up with this idea 
knowing that there was different ways to get the same type of application. Um, if we could put a product up in a vertical position, but also put it in a doorway where it gives you three dimensional space to incorporate movement while you're also pinning and applying pressure to tissue. And that was the concept of mobility wall. Um, you know, I mean, look, man, I, I mean, you know, I, as I told you, when you reached out to me, I was like, bro, this is such a, I mean, again, I didn't know we were going to be so connected as we are. Uh, but I, I should, I should stop taking that for granted because as you know, there's no, uh, coincidences, the only thing no in the universe. Yeah. Right. So it's like, uh, I've been using a foam roller literally since 2009 or whatever, whenever they first came out. Right. And as I told you, you know, I know Kelly, uh, snap, you know, so, I mean, like, I know all these guys that have been in this, you know, I know, uh, Donnie, uh, you know, big Donnie with like the, the, the role and the, and, the, and all that stuff. And I, I've met a lot of those guys, friends and stuff like that, but bro, I'm not joking. Like that is the staple of my workout performance, which I do not even start training until I foam roll. And so like 100%. when you told me about this, like I was like so excited, you know, but I, I had to put you on hold because I was like, bro, I'm moving to Tampa and it's going to be a nightmare. And here I am. I mean, how funny is that that we, you and I think, I think we talked in May and I was like, bro, yeah. it's probably going to be July or August. And here it is the beginning of August. And I'm, I finally have a house. And as I told him, you know, I'll let you guys know, I fell off a ladder in my house. And so it's like, I've been using this on my SI joint like three times a day. Uh, by the way, I was going to ask you about this, and it's kind of a rabbit hole, but we're going to go all over on this. Like, what do you recommend for installing this in a place of permanence? Because, like, in my house right now, obviously, I don't have a weight rack or anything like that. So we just put it in our um, one of our bedroom uh, closet doors, and we put yeah. it like, right there. Yeah, we put so it. What right I, right so what I typically recommend is that you, when you're not using the mobility wall, you just slide it to the top of the door frame. And you store it at the top Just of the keep it frame. high. Keep it high. When you're when you're ready to use it, come loosen it, slide it down in right. position, and lock it right into place. So that way, it's always kind of in sight, in mind. And that was the other concept too: is that you know people with foam rollers, they usually put them in a closet, they hide them under totally. the bed, forget so about out it. Of sight, out of mind. They don't even think about it, right? Totally. Um, yeah. So having something that's a little more in sight, in mind, and we put a lot of thought into the design of the product as well. You know, we wanted to make it aesthetically pleasing. It almost looks like a piece of art that would, you know fit into anybody's home and look kind of cool conversation piece. It's not like an eyesore. Um, the product is five pounds. It's super yeah, light yeah. and easy. You know? Have you thought about creating like a stand? Cause I know you also built it for weight racks, but bro, a stand. Yeah. Cause I've got my biohack room that we're building out right now. And I would yeah. love to have this thing. Yeah, we have room. a, uh, we have a, a, a commercial version that's been in CAD development. That's kind of like, a, you know, the true stretch cage. It's sure. like a true, it's a freestanding rack system that has yes. a mobility wall built into it. And our intention is to, you know, to engage with, with gyms and commercial settings where, you know, instead of chasing foam rollers all around the gym, you might see a mobility wall station in three different sections of the gym over by the legs, over by the cardio equipment, one over by all like the pushing and pull movement machines, you know, where people can just roll, walk over and use the mobility wall from, from the standing position and then get, get into their workouts. I'm just going to have to find, I'll just get a contractor or somebody, somebody who's smart and just come into my biohacking room and tell them like, maybe put like a steel gauge thing or whatever, where I can have, Yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you some concepts that we have that your guy could probably replicate very easily. Okay. That's awesome. That's what I definitely want to do. Cause yeah. Cause I, I mean, like I said, like, so my morning ritual and I know we're going all over it and we're going to get to all your stuff, but like my morning ritual is, um, I don't pray. I, I, I do a couple affirmations first thing in the morning, roll out of bed. And then I usually, if I can, I'm in South Florida now. So it's usually pretty good. I get, you know, like 10 minutes of sun gazing, 10 to 15 minutes of sun gazing. Uh, and then I get on my vibrogenics, which I don't know if you know what the vibrogenics is. We'll talk off air about that, but that thing is literally profound. It's, you know, it's oscillating, uh, acoustic wave technology going through your body with like 1200 different software programs. So I do a bunch of scalar wave frequencies. And then if I had this set up in that room, I would just go right from there to that. And I've been doing it anyway, but I walk back to my, my bedroom or whatever. And I get my SI joint on there and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, the other thing that's, I love that's about a morning it, ritual to me, that's a morning ritual technology. Right? Think like of it as, like you know, person. Get, getting a massage nowadays, you right. know, not only is it expensive for a lot of people, but it's also not convenient, right? Exactly. Um, not that it, not that massage therapists and, and, and chiropractors and all, all the other practitioners, they all have very, very uh, influential purpose in our lives and, and necessary, right? But at the same time, it becomes a convenient excuse for why people aren't doing any type of body work at all. 
And so the mobility wall is a way to eliminate that excuse. And what's great about it, it's one of the only products on the market that speaks to you without technology, meaning yeah. that when you're using the foam roller or mobility wall, it's giving you a lot of feedback. You yeah. can, as you're yeah, yeah. scanning the body with the foam roller and the trigger point attachments, you can feel areas of your body that are really sore and tender, which is an indication that that area is really tight and locked up. Yeah. Now, if a massage therapist is working on your body, how many times have people walked out of a massage being like, man, that was a waste of money. They just push <laughs> lotion around or like they didn't even go to the right spot. They didn't get put it. Thailand, bro. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Never. Um, but, uh, but with mobility wall, like you have the ability to find all those different areas and those nuances in the body as you're slowly scanning, you're getting all that feedback. So you can easily adjust and adapt around the product to find those little spots that are very specific, you know, working around your SI joint, like, you know, a massage therapist might not find that exact location right along that sacrum. Whereas if you're just kind of moving to the left and coming down a little bit on, you might find the exact spot that you need to put pressure on and then be able to mobilize your hip at the same time. So makes it really, my wife's issue is her upper thoracic rear, like, like right where the neck traps, right? As you know, a lot of women store their stress right here. Of course. This thing is the greatest thing ever for that. Like she's been telling me that she's like, Oh my God, like I so look forward to it. I mean, she, she uses it three times a day. That's amazing. I love it. But I mean, I think all women, would use that. I mean, I mean, I, you know, obviously I'm here to be a shill and sell your product for people. And I think it's an amazing product. And I, and, 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 you know, my audience knows I don't shill for products. I only put products that I personally use and yeah. that for, I mean, as you know, I'm sure you have the same thing. I got a lot of people that want me to promote their stuff and I say no to like 90% of people, but like every person in my opinion, who is focused on aging with grace and balance has to have this in their house because I mean, like you just said, like it's literally something you can do at any point in time. It's accessible as long as you have it set up, you know, for two or three times a day. And honestly, man, like even at 52, it is the shape that I'm in and the amount of time and that I put in being proactive about my health. That thing has been a godsend, bro. Like if you didn't send that to me, dude, like I would be a disaster right now. I mean, I've been seeing my Cairo and he cannot keep my SI joint and my right hip staying in place. And it's from the fall. Yeah. It's from falling off the ladder. And like I said, like every single day I'm using this, like I've been using it twice a day. A couple of times I've done it three times, but usually morning and night and dude, I sleep so much better. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. And I think, you know, what's important too, I think just for audience members and just for consumers out there to understand that, you know, this wasn't just an opportunity, a capitalistic opportunity that I saw to fill the gap in the market with a product, you know, uh, just inherently with my, my purpose and my mission in life, sure. even with my coaching and training business to help people improve the quality of their lives and live, you know, the richest life possible, with the highest level of vitality. I invented this product because I know it has the ability to, to help people feel better and yeah. pain, pain is a massive disruptor. I mean, you see people, you know, who walk around this, this planet with horrible energy yeah. simply because they're in a lot of pain and even sometimes not even aware of the pain that they're in, whether it's a neck pain or a hip pain or shoulder pain or something going on in their body. And when you can alleviate pain, it changes people's life radically. Yes. And I just felt like people don't have access to tools that really allow them to address their pain easily on a consistent basis. Yeah. So somebody who has neck pain or even like you said, SI pain, right? Yeah. SI joint pain. You wake up every morning. If you have your mobility wall that you know you can drop down, set up, easily engage with it, spend so five, ten, five, ten minutes a day. And that that alleviates your pain. Now you can go live your day. You're not screaming at somebody in traffic. You're not frustrated <laughs> because you're standing in line. You know what I mean? I mean, it happens, right? <laughs> Like sometimes course, people man. are just like redirecting their, their anger and frustration. It's like not, it's, it's coming from somewhere else. They're projecting it from somewhere else. And like I said, pain can be a real uh, uh, nemesis of that. And they don't even realize it, but taking people out of pain can dramatically improve the quality of people's lives. And that was really the intention was to bring a tool to market that can help people address areas of their body that they might be suffering from that 
they don't have the ability to get chiropractic work or massage work done on a regular basis, but now they have the ability to work on their own bodies and learn how to master recovery of their, with their own bodies on their own with a tool that makes it very easy. I mean, bro, honestly, man, we're so connected. You talk about the exact same things that I do. Like you talk about, that's why I laughed out loud when you said you, you don't go driving on the road and get into a argument with somebody or road rage or whatever. Like I always tell people like, by the way, my pit right now is scratching at the door. He's, he's not used to this like new studio. He wants in, he wants in on the podcast. Are you, are you okay if I let him in real quick? Hold on. Yeah. Let him in. only the second time the podcast has ever been interrupted but he was just going to keep scratching and i know you love dogs so we're good but um but so i always say because now we're you know getting into vibration and i want you to talk about your you know the method to everything you do and we'll even go into a deeper spiritual conversation around that because i know who you are now energetically but uh when when you do that when so when you have your morning ritual and you have that amazing Zen morning and, you know, you, you get into a really awesome still state or whatever, and then you go to work and you get in your car and you drive the, the, the gift of living in, in the matrix or quote unquote in the third dimension in this physical body as these spiritual energy beings, which is what we are, is we have a choice, right? Like somebody can cut us off or will cut us off. Right. And you have two choices. You can react out of fear, which is what 90% of people will do, right? And go into road rage and grip the steering wheel and speed up and get next to him and be like, pull over, right? Which like I've done and you've done and we've all done, you know, any alpha male. I'm from Boston, man. I bet there are blood out there, yeah. I'll show you. Or we can pull back and we can maintain the Zen and respond out of love and we can literally send them a thought of, wow, this person must be having a really bad day. I send you love, right? right. Or I send you love and light or whatever. And what people have to understand, and, and I, and I you know, made this point before, I don't know if on the podcast, I know on live streams before, is that the laws of energy prove that if you send a resonant, loving thought, it transmutes a dissonant, negative reactive thought, right? So that person, if you wave at them and say, you know, again, you don't even have to speak, but you energetically say, wow, you must be having a bad day. I send you love. They'll stop and look at you and have this like, you know, look of disbelief or incredulity and be like, Done. right. And so what you've done is you've actually transmuted their negativity and now you've put them in a better place and state because now their negative energy has been transmuted to not positive, but more of a middle ground. Yeah. But now they have a chance to get out of that bad mood. So like I always tell people like, again, react out of fear, which is what most <clears throat> people do and be a moron and road rage and stuff, or just choose to respond out of love. Now, obviously, as you know, Chris, choosing to respond out of love does take forethought. It does take a person who has to come from a neutral observation standpoint you know, and not the ego point because the ego wants to be like, fuck you, pull over. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. You know, but like the, 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 the multidimensional higher self perspective is literally like, man, this person must be having a bad day. And, and, you know, yeah. honestly, I, my spiritual mentorship, I have many now, but, uh, my, my, my wife, my current wife now, after I left my last marriage, um, has, you know, pushed me on this path. Like, you know, she used to say things to me, Cause I was a maniac when she first met me, you know, and I, mm -hmm. and I was coming out of a really bad divorce and my kids have been kidnapped from me. And, you know, I had the typical victim, uh, mindset or mentality. And she would say to me, like, why do you, why do you act like that? Like, you know, you, you have this amazing physical body and you, you know, you work so hard to look at that, but like, what are you doing for your inner game and your, you know, your, your inner, your inner self. And I'd be literally looking at her like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? So it's like you you have to get to a place where just as we work out, just as we use mobility, where we practice working on this inner game, you know, like yeah. strengthening the inner sanctum so mm -hmm. that the react the reactionary aspects of life, which again are controlled by our ego, are for the most part tame, right? I mean, we're gonna have egoic actions right like you're human right you get it's normal yeah, and the to ego have a saves reaction, us, but, right the yeah. ego is the thing that keeps us from walking out <laughs> in front of traffic or getting hit by a train or you know having a, obviously you know 2000 years ago the saber tooth tiger eating us you know on the savannah but but the reality is now today we don't really have a lot of places where we really need the ego yeah so if you can it, harness your ego ego you're going to be better i really that reminds me of a quote that i heard from oprah winfrey years years ago 
where she talked about, she puts a sign on the front of her house that said, be aware of the energy you bring into the room. Right. So that people who come into her home. That's exactly right. Like, understand that whatever you bring into this house, you have the power and ability to change either positively or negatively. You know, how, how people are going to feel. And I think a lot of people don't realize that they have that power and ability. So they don't think consciously like, hey, if I'm having a bad day and I'm about to go meet up with a group of people, do I bring that bad day and bad energy into this and shit? All these people could be having the best day ever. Right. And I'm just going to come in and throw up all, all over everyone and just like shift their energy. Maybe I should be mindful enough to think, hey, listen, having a bad day. Like, let me just table that for a minute and just really be aware of what energy I'm about to bring into this room. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to bring anybody down. I don't want to shift anybody, take them down. So just really being mindful. When I heard that quote, it, it really hit me hard years ago and made me think now I'm not perfect with it, but I certainly think about, you know, whether I'm, if I'm going through a great day, like I'm bringing that energy into the room. I want to shift people for sure. I have the ability to do that, but if I'm having a bad day, there's times I'll cancel on, on plans because I just don't want to bring that energy to that person or to those people or to that event, because it's just, I can't, I, I need time to like work through whatever I'm going through. And it's yeah. not fair for me to bring that energy into this space or to these people. Um, and yeah, I just think that it just Chris, reminded awesome, me of that man. quote. That's so know? awesome though. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. I mean, cause look, man, the truth is, is that we are, all we are is energy. Mm -hmm. Let's just be realistic. And when you're consciously aware that that is what we are to be able to be, that have that much foresight and awareness, you know, from like a humanistic perspective to concern yourself like that, where you're like, Hey man, I'm having a bad day. I'm not going to mix my energy with people who might be having a good day. That takes a lot of conscious yeah. forethought. And the other thing about that is, dude, we all know the opposite holds true too. Like when you get, and I tell people this all the time, but when you're in a, in the midst or the presence of an energy vampire, you got to get the fuck out. Yeah. Cause mixing energy with someone who is literally parasitically sucking your energy. It doesn't matter what you want to talk about. You yeah. are literally being led down a path. You know, it's like the Navy SEALs talk about having empathy and not sympathy. Right. And, and you have to understand like for energy vampires, like empathy protects your energy field. Hmm. Sympathy is sympathizing with the negative energy vampire. Yeah which means you're now crossing your energy stream with theirs, right? So it's like, you know, you think about like a sympathetic detonation on, you know, for people that sure. don't have that energy, sure. a sympathetic de detonation <clears throat> device, you're connected to that energy. You're connected to a sympathetic device. So it's the same thing with sympathy and empathy. People have to understand the difference. And it's not, I'm not saying that sympathy is wrong, <clears throat> but if you, if you're sympathetic and not empathetic, you're connected to negative energy or potentially. And he, but even you know, for empaths, so like real sensitive Horrible, empaths, dude. it's hard because, you know, Brutal. the the, Brutal. the real challenge for an empath is to be able to observe and not <laughs> absorb, right? <laughs> exactly. It's it's hard. But when well, you're my a empath. is a serious empath. And until she was 45 years old, 46, really, she didn't know how to manage it. Yeah. She could come into a room and literally absorb all of the pain and then take it out on me or anyone. Yeah. Loved ones until yeah. until an empathic person realizes how to deflect and how to walk into a room and 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 and, and like protect said, literally, themselves. literally yeah. observe. Yeah, not absorb. That, exactly. It. I love that. Observe and not absorb. I'm gonna use that. Uh, but like, yeah, because like again, you're under siege because you're feeling that. Took me a long time to 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 master that as well. And and I mass I say master loosely. You know, but yeah. definitely like early on in my career, it was, I would, I would walk around feeling pain stricken and I'm like, what am I feeling this way for? Like, my life is great. And I would realize like, wow, man, like a lot of people that I'm working with are going through some heavy shit in their lives. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, and I'm just coaching them through this process. And I'm like, 
I, I can't, sh- I'm not shaking it off at the end of the day. I'm just no. like full no. of all this energy that is not my energy. It's not my yeah. life. It's not my problem. These aren't my issues, but it felt heavy. And so yeah. I found a process in how to really protect myself and then at times absorb some of it, but then get rid of it immediately. Like just take it to the dump and it's gone. So now I'm back, you know, and, and it's, it's taken years to get there, but definitely, you know, have been able to figure out that way out because as a true empath, it's, it can be really challenging. Let's talk about that. And, and remind me to, for me to tell you an absolutely, you'll crack up all over story about that. Like it's not for, it's not for this podcast, but, <laughs> but off air, I will tell you something about that uh, because my wife is exact same thing, um, but in, sure. a, in a, an environment where you don't want to be absorbing people's energy. So I'll like, uh, it's, it's, it's hilarious actually as a yeah. story. But why don't you talk a little bit about what you were just talking about? Like, which is kind of like the sequence or the seeing into you know, the unique approach, mm-hmm. right. That you kind of have related to your coaching pr- program from a lifestyle and habit coaching. Yeah. I think, you know, there were two really, um, influential moments in my life that kind of set me on the path to, to health and wellness um, early on too, you know, at 16 sure. years old, um, I was misproperly diagnosed for childhood leukemia. You might. Oh, wow. And, and so at an early age, I was faced with the, the possibility of mortality, which scared the living shit out of me yeah. and was, you know, I had no idea. I mean, I, I played division one college hockey. I was an athlete. Like, I took good care of myself, like my health and from all every, you know, intensive purpose that I understood back then, like I was fine. Yeah. But for some reason this popped up, my white blood cell count was all over the place. They couldn't figure it out. And they were just frivolously throwing out childhood leukemia. And so Dude, that's crazy, you know, so that's that what doctors do though, bro. That's allopathic medicine for you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right. Um, and so fortunately they were wrong. Um, but at that time, you know, it, it really forced me into doing lots of research. And so I became fascinated with just like trying to learn and understand and almost like learn how to take control of my own body and not rely on, on doctors, you know? Um, <clears throat> so they were wrong. The, the second most critical, uh, event that pushed me into this direction of health and wellness was, like I said, I played hockey, you know, I played division one college hockey at Quinnipiac university. And after my freshman year, my coach had really encouraged me. He said, listen, if you want to, if you want to play next year, we, you got to put on some size. Cause when you're in high school, you're playing with 14 year olds and 18 year olds. When you right. get to college, you're playing with men. And at that and time, division one, a lot of them are pros. Right. And at that time I was, you know, 19 years old. I was 170 pounds soaking wet. I was a forward right wing. So being kind of like light and fast was fine, but I also, you got to be able to hold your own out. Yeah. You're going to get bold bro. Yeah. So, but I took that seriously because this was, you know, in my mind, I thought I'm either going to try to go semi-pro or, you know, maybe, maybe I shot playing sure. pro, but you know, um, but I, my hockey was my, my career at that point. In my That's awesome. Um, so I went home that summer and in three months, put on 30 pounds. I came back two Oh five. That's uh, awesome. And cause I just literally hit weights. This is when Bill Phillips had just come out with EAS. So I was all over, <laughs> you I was all over the EAS, EAS supplements was really, was just, uh, Anavar and D ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember what ultimate, <laughs> ultimate orange, like all of it. Right. You know, we're, we're from the same of generation. Man. I know bro. By the way, ultimate orange was the shizzle. Yeah. So, so, um, so I, I, I put on that 30 pounds in that summer and it was just like so fascinating to me how easily you can manipulate your body through exercise, through supplementation and through nutrition. It was the first yeah. time I was working yeah. in a warehouse that summer, yeah. driving a forklift. So my mom would cook me breakfast at 5 a.m. And I'd hit, the ro- I'd hit the roach coach at 7 a.m. to get my yeah. second breakfast. I mean, I was just like. You know, metrics was their protein shakes was, you know, we're just hitting God, the scene back right. then. And then they sold metrics. Scott Connolly sold metrics and the product went south. But that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, so so I was just so blown away. So those two events really just pushed me into this, this, you know, fascination with health and wellness and fitness. I ended up leaving hockey after my junior year and pers- and started getting into competitive bodybuilding. So I was a competitive bodybuilder for a short, for a few years. Um, how and big did you, how big did you get as a bodybuilder off season? Two fifteen, six foot, um, six, one, two fifteen was Bro, we're literally clones of each other. This is insane. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. I'm six, one, two. And right now I'm like two eleven, And the biggest, I think I ever was like carb loaded and just fat. 
was like 227. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't get much higher. I mean, I I could have, if I really wanted to push the envelope, but I was, Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to do a lot of drugs and stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I came, so I came off of, uh, so I came off of that and, and just was really fascinated with the idea and the concept of look, health and wellness, you know, from making sure your health, cancer, disease, all yeah. of that, and then fitness of like, wow, you can really manipulate your body. I can do this, yeah. In a very short period of time. Yeah. And so it it, it really inspired me to want to start considering a path in, in developing, you know, my own program. Um, and then when I moved to LA and in, in uh, early 2000, 2001, 2002, to pursue an acting career, you know, I like I said, I was, you know, sort of a struggling actor at that time, but I found a lot of peace and simplicity. Li- had very little, but found that working on that inner peace and finding systems like my five by two method that I talked about or came up with, um, were now I was working on the mindset. So I was combining mindset with physiology, you know, with health and wellness, all these things and aspects that were really unique and different to my program. And at the time, um, I thought it was really interesting to build a program like because nobody was really talking about that. There were trainers out there just primarily focused on training, mm. you know, and that was really it. But I found that working with my clients that I was starting to pick up one by one and just trying to really understand them, understand what's going on. I would find that it's not that they are they can't work out or it's not that they don't know and understand that they should be focusing on better quality foods, but they got stuck. It's their mindset shift. Yeah. And so it was really health from the inside out. And, you know, over the years, really. Um, was able to develop a, a really great group of people that that continued to you know work as a referral funnel for me. But the premise of the program started to evolve into you know focusing on movement, mobility, focusing on diet from inflammation, uh, anti-inflammatory perspectives, which a lot of people weren't focusing on. Um, really looking at people's hormones and blood work, making sure yeah. people were getting blood work to find out what's going on inside before we even start approaching, you know, anything externally, you know, with diet and training. I just want to really understand what's going on from from an internal health standpoint because we can get really specific. Um, lifestyle hacks, focusing on time management, stress management, sleep management, which most people highly undervalue. Sleep is a blind spot for several people. Oh yeah, your training and your nutrition could be a hundred percent on point, but your sleep's, you know, screwed up. You're not getting enough quality sleep. You're not getting REM sleep. You're not setting your body up for good quality sleep. You know, the results you get are 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 going to be severely undermined. Um, You know, incorporating supplementation. You know, finding the right supplements to to help support people so that they understand and know what they should be incorporating to fill in the gaps of some of the nutrient deficiencies that we have in our food supply chain nowadays. Um, in my program, I do photo updates every two weeks with my clients. I don't spend a lot of time on the scale or even obsess over body fat measurements. Yeah. Right? I really, I want people to look at the photo because I can see what's going on with body composition. I can see what's going on with posture and balance, right? I want them to learn how to get connected and also see themselves because most people hide from themselves. Absolutely. Like most people, the, the first reaction I get when people have to load their first round of photos into, into the app, in my, the app that I use for my programming, the first thing they say is, Oh my God. Like they're so blown away. Like they didn't know if they looked like that. It's like, because they've been covering themselves up with clothes and masking what's really going on, which perpetuates a lot of the habits and, and, and that have led and got them to that place in the first place. Um, so it's literally the first time they're seeing themselves. And that's a great place to start the journey, right? Um, and then I have all sorts of accountability check-ins with my clients. All you know, I'm constantly checking in, touching base. Um, you know, we text on a regular basis. I have a form app that I use where people can self-record videos of, in the gym and exercises. They import it into the form app, and then I screen record my notes on top of their videos to give them feedback on position, pot, you know, uh, movement patterns, you know all sorts of imbalances that they're, they're showing in their bodies. So it's really helpful. It, it, it feels like, you know, it gives them a lot of freedom and flexibility in their life and in their day, but having that support and structure behind, if they really need that to help keep them going, keep them on point, heading towards that, you know, that true North. 
Um, that's, that's awesome. I was actually just looking at your uh, Instagram and um, I'll post that at the end of the show for everybody. But I mean, it's just Chris DeVecchio on, on Instagram. If you guys want to check him out and stuff, but he's got a lot of like before and afters and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, but what, something you said that really resonated with me is like understanding people uh, like their biomechanics and their anatomy and stuff like that, which, you know, like I, I don't do. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I have a, 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 a large private coaching group, but it's, you know, it's not one on one. I don't really trade time for money that much anymore. Not that I can or won't, but I just, you know, I'm doing so many other things and stuff like that and attempting to scale my businesses and stuff like that. But like, mm-hmm. um, I like when I, when I have conversations one-on-one with people, which still happens for my like I- internal people, I have to tell them the truth. Um, you know, it's hard to work remotely with people who you can't supervise like one time in person, right. For, from the standpoint of like, like what you were saying, like helping them biomechanically, helping them with correct technique and form and stuff like that. And I think in today's world, in the fitness community, especially a lot of people think they can watch YouTube or TikTok videos, you know what I mean? And watch like fitness influencers or even people like us, you know, and think that they can mimic and have no prior bath, you know, athletic background. Like obviously, you were almost a pro hockey player. I was a pro basketball player. So it's like, there, you know, there's, there's certain things that people who are athletes in the past, you know, mastered, if we want to call that, or, you know, somewhat close to mastery begin, begin uh, again, because of our practice. Whereas if you're someone who didn't have an athletic background and you now want to lift and you want to get fit or, you know, have a six pack or just look good with your shirt off, there's sometimes is like a level of neurological coordination. hundred percent. Right? And if you don't have that, you need a, you know, and I hate using the word need, but you require a coach who can teach you these type of things. And I think a lot of people today, unfortunately, again, think they can watch YouTube or TikTok or even Instagram and watch influencers or coaches or whatever, do what they're doing and not still get it. Because bro, I know you know this, but like, even when I got with my VIP guys or have been getting with my VIP guys for the last couple of years, I change things that dramatically impact the way they look and feel in just a couple of months. Right. And they're just like simple things. Like, I mean, I, I I can think about like, just like the way a person does a tricep extension or a tricep push down and the way they have their spine aligned or the way they have pressure in their low back because they don't have their knees, you know, slightly bent or just, just tiny little things that, you know, people like you and I have been in the game for so long can spot that they'll never know. And so, you know, my point of why I'm saying this is, is like the value of in-person instruction, even if it's Mm -hmm. just one or two sessions is a game changer in this quote unquote new age of digital videos and technology where people are working remotely with zoom calls and, you know, stream calls or whatever, you know what I mean? So it's like spend time with your trainer, you know, like, no, so I totally I agree. I, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I totally agree with you. And I would say that what's, what I've found, I had confidence in, but I've also found, you know, very ex- exciting is that I'm, I'm been able to achieve exactly what you're talking about through yeah. the systems that I provide. That's awesome. The, the app, like the, the biggest issue and going back to a point that you made that I see people getting into the gym and trying to exercise is that like you said, they may mimic a movement that they see somebody doing, but that individual doesn't know how to generate. That's stimulus. exactly right. They don't know how to right. generate stimulus because just bending your elbow, <laughs> you know, doesn't mean that you did a bicep curl. Can you, are you able to create and generate mechanical tension into that muscle at the proper rep range that's in exactly a way right. that's going to create hypertrophy? Right. You know, to, and so, to what, well, hold on to what you're saying is like a lot of these young kids today, and I'm not picking on any generation, but younger people who, as you know, are really good mimics mm-hmm. because they watch the videos and they download, yeah, the, they, they download the Grant Cardone success stories and all these things. But as I say, you might know the words to the song, but you can't feel the tune, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, that's what you're saying about the firing the muscle and generating the force and creating the fork. I mean, I get it all the time. Clients yeah. will hit me up all the time say, hey, I saw this guy doing this bicep exercise in the gym. Can I do that? How come we're not doing that? And I said, well, <laughs> well, show me. I said, show me the exercise. Right. And they show me the exercise. And I'm like, that, that is doing nothing to provide stimulus. He's like, but the guy's jacked. I'm like, yeah, you don't know if this guy's what this guy's doing at home, what he's ejecting himself with. You don't know what he's eating. You don't know all the Dude, other exercises so true, he's man. doing. Like it's he so might just true. be doing this movement. He thinks he's doing something for his, you know, great something for his bicep, but it's 
three other exercises bro, that literally. you did. That, you know? bro, bro, honestly, I, it's hilarious that you say it. Again, we're so connected. I mean, I tell people this all the time, and I don't care who I offend when I say this. 80% of pro bodybuilders don't even know how to lift. They just have great genetics and use a lot of drugs. That doesn't mean they're not hard trainers and they don't go there every day. They definitely put in the they definitely yeah. put in the work. I mean, look, you know, I, I trained under Mike Mentor's protege for two years, Mike M Marcus Reinhardt, who still is training people in Las Vegas, and the guy is absolutely insane. But he's literally one of the greatest, probably I would say, personal trainers ever because he literally <laughs> knows anatomy, kinesiology, biodynamics better than anybody. I mean, he can literally walk up to anybody in the whole world and be like, "You need to change that." You know, this you're, this is wrong. And he would literally tell me in our training sessions, he was like, "Bro, if I trained, you know, blank insert Mr. Olympia." they would be twice the size they are now. They yeah. don't even know how to stimulate muscle in the proper way because, you know, it's going back to, again, their form, ego. Or, or choosing then, less optimal movements. Like, exactly. You know, right. doing, 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 a, doing a dumbbell overhead tricep extension is less optimal than grabbing a cable, which is going to create more stimulus, more mechanical tension through the entire range profile. Right? By the way, like, that's literally my favorite movement in the planet is a cable extension. Cable for overhead but dude, I'm not kidding you. Like, yes, yes. But you, and, and that's the problem. You, you, you know, our, you know, call them, people were coaching or mentees or whatever you want to call them. Like yeah. they do, they watch these videos and they see these big Jack people. And this isn't just for guys. This is for women too. Right. Like, sure. and, and, and they, 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 they question um, why it, it's not happening. And you know, a, a, a somebody that I do coach who's in my inner circle, a younger guy, very, very smart though. You know, I asked him about this. I was like, why is it that your generation is so like lost when it comes to understanding these little things. And they're like, it's, it's not that we're lost. It's just that we grew up in a time where there were so many alternate forms, bro. When you and I grew up, like you said, you had muscle media 2000, you know, you had no internet to distract you. One of the best magazines. You had, no internet to distract you, bro. you had no bros on Instagram or TikTok or any of the shit putting out alternative forms of let's just call it media or content or really yeah. just distractions. Yeah. And you just focused on the job at hand. And, and, and again, there's many ways to skin a cat, right? And, and, and if you focused and, you know, Darren Hardy, you use the compound effect, you just kept showing up and working hard and working hard. You would build an amazing physique. Whereas today yeah. these younger kids are so distracted. There's so much riffraff, the signal to noise ratio is out of control and you're right. They just see that. And then they're texting you or, e or emailing you or calling you and they're like, but Chris, why am I not doing that for my glute? They think it looks, they think it looks cool. You know, I mean, just saying how this isn't really gender specific. I mean, I get texts from women all the time saying, Hey, I saw this girl doing this exercise for her glutes. And I'm like, it's a horrible exercise. There's no leverage for the glutes at all to it's generate any force for whatsoever. <laughs> That's actually for your piriformis, not for your glute. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you want a glute exercise, stick to this, you know, which it just offers a higher degree of stimulus, higher degrees of stability. Like all that science is showing that yeah. for sure now. So yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's just the world that we live in now, you know, it's just so much out there, so much to get distracted. People are chasing that. They, they don't, they don't want to stick to the basics that can actually work. Bro, you that's know? all it is. You just hit the nail on the head. I mean, literally, and I'm not saying that, you know, as you get older and you, you know, you're just a little bit younger than I am. I'm 52, you're 47. But the reality is, is like, as you get older, we want to stimulate the primary mover as much as we can. And ultimately, you know, you're going to probably use a combination of machines and some free weights and maybe, you know, even, even plyometrics, you know, even like, you know, um, free stuff, you know, where you're just doing like, you know, wall squats, using the mobility wall, whatever. But like, it's mind blowing to see older people still training the way people were, or you and I were training like in our twenties, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you still see dudes going into the gym, <laughs> wrapping up their knees and their back <laughs> and stuff like in their fifties, squatting and deading heavy weight. And it's like, dude, what in the hell are you doing? But yeah, man, like there's no coaching. They don't have a mentor. They don't have somebody that's like telling them, Hey bro, you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of times too, what I see is that people also suffer, like some of the big struggles is that they think about doing something, but they don't actually pull the trigger, right? Right. They don't actually pull the trigger on doing things. And so what I found is like the question I usually ask them at that point is like, 
you almost did it, but how many more years of like almost <laughs> doing something are you going to let pass by? Like what, you know, what are, what, what, ha- what has not pulling the trigger cost you, you know? And I think that's really the, the precipice of where I usually meet people in, in my career at this point now is that they're almost being forced to have to do something because they went to the doctor. There was that uncomfortable silence of 10 or 15 seconds where the doctor is trying to break the news to them that, Hey, you're diabetic. Now we got to get you on medication or your blood pressure is through the roof. You're going to have a heart attack in three weeks. If you didn't come in and see me. And it's now people are feeling like I got to do something about this. And they're looking back going, man, I, I, I thought about doing this 10 years ago. I should have, you know? And so you know, I just think it's a really interesting point in, in people's lives at that moment, you know, and, and my hope is that I catch people before those, um, those uncomfortable silences, at the doctor's office happens, you know, I really, I like to be able to take people at an early stage of interest, and teach them how to fall in love with the process of becoming great, and really fall in love with the process of their own bodies and becoming a master of their own bodies right, and, right. and understanding um, the value of life, you know, it's something like you and I can really relate to that. And I think, you know, it, it can be really hard to, to teach people that if they don't have it within them, right. but disease, pain, these are teachers that it teaches yeah. them. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to go through those experiences to, to learn how to start taking better care of ourselves and give us a longer runway of better quality life. You know, um, in some cases it's, it's the opposite, but you know, that's really what in my program, I, I really, you know, those are my intentions, you know, is to get people early on and how I provide and, and am able to achieve long-term compliance and sustainability is they see and feel my level of, of passion and uh, interest and concern with respecting quality of life, especially for them in yeah. the process of coaching. And it, it, yeah, I can see the moment where it kind of dawns on them. They're like, man, this guy cares about me so much. Why don't I care about myself that much? Why am I not caring enough? And it's like that part, I think is really a unique component to the program. I, I can't like, it's just, you know, call it proprietary, call it whatever it is, but I genuinely care so much. And when I see somebody in pain or I see somebody's health failing and I know where they're going. And I know exactly what we can do to redirect it. I fight for them so hard so that they can hopefully see what I'm seeing and feel what I'm feeling. So they get in the fight with me. And then eventually I'm able to just, if it's a success story, which fortunately the majority of them are, I'm able to just slowly start to back away. And it's like kicking the training wheels off the bike. It's like, now they're just riding and they're taking it themselves and they're feeling and seeing all of these shifts and transformations internally externally they're getting validation from people around them unsolicited showing like man and it starts to feel good like it wakes them up you know are you using therapeutic peptides are you a new user maybe an advanced user maybe you're considering starting peptides highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my pdf and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Bro, I'm looking at your website right now. It's awesome. Who wrote, who did your website? Uh, couldn't, we, we built it ourselves. We, uh, we had some guy, we had a, a web designer help us with some of the aspects. I can't even remember his name. Uh, but you launched them already. I got you. No, it's great though. I mean, it's very yeah. clear. I mean, I, you know, I, I, as an internet marketer, I mean, I, you know, I'm a professional at like evaluating websites and like your website, like is a very transformational, very, when you look at a website today, it's about simplicity. Are you getting your message across? Like what you do and stuff like that. It's like, it's really good, man. I got to give you a lot of credit. I don't really, thank you, man. As a professional website grader, I'm like, damn, like, like my website right now is absolutely needing, needing of change. Like you have a much better image on your website. I mean, I have a lot more going on on my website right now, but it's not in, in a better way, you know, more, yeah, more no, is you. never better. I, I, I swear that I know, you know, it was Tim Ferriss that marketed that, you know, less is more, but like more, yeah. you really, as you know, as you know, as you get older, almost <laughs> it can be applied more is not better in everything. It's always 
less is more yeah. start low go yeah. slow right yeah. like it yeah. really yeah. is one of those things but um kind of just the last point and 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 you know it's more of a spiritual thing and you you'd said it earlier you figured out at a young age <clears throat> that you didn't need a doctor to cure your ills and that you had to become the personal what I like to call the personal scientist of your own health, right? From what yeah. you were experiencing. And you then learned to master and manipulate the human body through building muscle, losing body fat. And then obviously you expanded that. And you took that into working with clients, which is what you're doing now today still, even in your, in your entrepreneurial designing technology, which helps the world. Um, bro, let's go a little bit deeper on that just for maybe five minutes or so. But like, that is the number one problem right now in the world, right? Like, we have a society that has bifurcated the societal bifurcation is your, and this is my classification of them and you may have your own, but I know it's similar We're on the same wavelength. It's like you're sovereign, empowered and free, which means you take ownership. You're personally accountable for your fitness, for your nutrition, for your health, for your sleep, for who you are, who are your friends or, and this is obviously the larger portion of society, your dissonant, a victim not personally accountable and literally, and this is the biggest point and component, everything you give your power away to the external, whether it's the doctor, the politician, the teacher, uh, the scientist, science, trust in the science, right? Like, like you have totally externalized your power. And so now you're totally disempowered. And so the doctor thing, you know, to really focus on that, bro, I mean, think about what has happened in the last three years without getting into all the shenanigans, people who are not empowered, again, that second sect, have given away and lost it all. And now all they care about is what the doctor says. I mean, they go to the doctor for health and nutrition advice, which is absolutely, as you know, the dumbest, most ass backward thing you can do. And even the best doctors out there will tell you that if they know about health and nutrition and talk about the things that you and I do, it's because they're self-taught, literally. Trust the experts is that common phrase, which is unreal, scary, right? Um, and man, it really strikes a chord when you talk about the importance of just, you know, being empowered versus giving your power away. Yes. And I think that, you know, again, going just touching base on the program, but also just in general, like I think, you know, sort of a concern with the masses is that people, aren't taking the time to really learn and educate themselves on their bodies. Right. Right. right? They're right. spending more time trying to understand and learn their iPhone or their brand new <laughs> Tesla and the, all the technology and the most important machine that you'll ever own is your body. <laughs> and, and you're just leaving it up to the mechanic, you know, right. IE doctors or whatever to say, this is wrong. That's wrong. This is wrong. Without even knowing yourself, what might potentially be going on, or at least try to take interest and understand and see if there's other things that you can do to make improvements. Maybe if you change the oil on your own, or like rotate the tires every ten thousand miles, like you're supposed, like things that you can do on your own to keep up that maintenance and keep up that self. There's less wear and tear on that vehicle, on your vehicle, right, on your machine. So. Um, you know, again, you and I share to think the same interests and, and passion for wanting to feel in control. And I think that that level of control and empowerment, I mean, I understand that, look, anything could happen, right? Knock on wood, like life is just dynamic. We never know. But if there's things that I do know, because I spend the time to research and understand, test things out in a lot of cases that become the guinea pig for a lot of these things. Yeah. If you take the time to understand if there's things I can do that are going to give me at least a better chance at living a longer, higher quality life, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not just sitting around waiting and just living life unconsciously, not paying attention. And then if things pop up, I just leave it up to whatever a physician might say or might not say. Like, I'm going to take control over those things. Um, and, and that's a really powerful place to be. It, it's, it, it gives you a sense of freedom in a, in a life full of chaos right now, when people are feeling from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep, feeling stressed and overwhelmed on a day-to-day -day basis. If you can free up a piece of your mind 
of not being concerned about your health and wellness because you know that you're doing things every single day to take really good care of that. You're taking you're taking great quality supplements. You're eating really great quality nutrition, which food can be either medicine or poison. Right. Um, you're paying attention to getting the right type of exercise. You're mindful about the type of sleep and the quality of sleep. You're reducing drugs and alcohol. You're conscious of what of, of your mental health, your relationships, quality of relationships, and how you you know the positive feedback loops that you allow to occur in the in the mind versus negative feedback loops. If you're if you're mindful and intentional about all those things, you now free up this part of your mind that you don't worry. I don't don't spend my days worrying about my health. Right. Right. Because I know that I've got all that in a really good place, knowing that, Hey, look, something could or could not happen. It just, it's just a way of life, but I don't worry about that. So now I can focus my energy on creating other great products or connecting with other people and influencing other people or education, learning, or if there's something stressful going on in the world, I can handle that stress with ease because I'm not overwhelmed with all these other looming thoughts, possibly even health, because I'm already taking care of that. Yeah. So I'm doing yeah. it on autopilot every single day. I'm in that routine, in that flow state. And I think a lot of people do worry very quietly on a very high frequency about their health and wellness because they know they're not taking good care of themselves or they're not taking interest and in, in dedicating enough time and allocating enough time to self-care. And they try to ignore it until they get that alarm of something shows up, they something happens, they go to the doctor or they're hit with an illness or a disease or they break something. You know, it just it 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 has to unfortunately for a lot of people be that wake up call. And yeah. you know. I think yeah. guys like you and I, and there's several other amazing thought leaders in this space, I think that are doing some amazing things to help kind of lead that charge as well. And, and just try to inspire people. It's to really try to inspire people, not to say, Hey, I'm better than you. What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. It's not a judgment yeah. thing. It's, we just see so much value in being able to take that control back and, and, and get that sense of peace and freedom to live a better quality life. Yeah, man. Um, you That's know, beautiful, so try man. to really inspire people in that way. You know, it's beautiful, man. You are doing it hundred percent. I mean, I, you know, that's a whole nother rabbit hole and a whole nother podcast, but like, you know, just talking about the whole, they're worried, they're worrying in silence. I mean, dude, think about all the people that, you know, chose the, you know what, you know, and you know, now the science is out there in the field, you know, this isn't even debatable anymore that they know that it was a, um, a placebo program that they were literally injecting people with, uh, saline or whatever the nocebo is, right? Like they were just, that's the way it is. I mean, bro, like I literally speak, as you know, in my day-to-day craft with the world's top doctors. I mean, that's what I do. I mean, they've been texting me going on right now as I've been talking to you. I mean, I'm in a big text thread with some of the world's top doctors. And I mean, and again, it's a whole nother podcast and I want to end and promote your stuff here in a second. And you and I can talk off air, but like we are in, we are entering right now, or it, it's happening in real time, but obviously many people don't know, but we're entering the worst health crisis the world has ever seen because now those people who got hit with that, you know, just call it a population reduction weapon are dealing with the repercussions and a lot of them are dying. I, I mean, I mean, straight up, all you have to do is talk to their doctors. I mean, it, 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 yeah, it is literally that bad. So people like you and I, the solution to that is like, find if you're listening to this podcast and you're one of those people and you need help, you need to reach out to Chris. You need to reach out to me. You need to reach out to people like us because we have people in our networks that can help you. You know, we can help you guys with mind body. Cause as you were saying, you know, through this whole podcast, the mind is where everything is, right? We are literally nothing more than where we place our consciousness. Our thoughts are what create our reality. We are the story directors, okay? It's that simple. So if you are someone who's been maligned by whatever you want to call it without me mentioning it, because this podcast is too profound for me to get a mark, um, then look for help and know that you still can receive help, but first have to change your thoughts. Um, And obviously people like me and Chris can help, but let me just throw your stuff up here real quick. So his website, which I was just talking to you guys about is... Chris DeVecchio.com. Did I say it right? DeVecchio or DeVecchio? DeVecchio. DeVecchio. A paisan, a really good paisan. Oh, you got it. Fantastic. 
That's right. And, uh, and he also is, uh, of course, found on IG, which is same dude. Same thing on Facebook. And then is your web, do you have a website for mobility wall? Mobilitywall.com. Yep. Mobilitywall.com. So I'll just, you know, say that guys and gals, he sent this to me. I use this now every day of my life, just like I use my vibrogenics every day of my life. It's amazing. You absolutely have to get it. By the way, it's not even expensive. What is this? Like 175 bucks? $99. $99. Wow. And of course, somebody attempts to call me. I mean, how is that that I have all my numbers, my calls blocked and it still comes in? It's like the matrix. There's gateways to the matrix. Somebody important. Someone's got that breakthrough access. It wasn't though. It was a spam. But, uh, <laughs> and I should, I mean, that's like happened like three times in my life on a podcast and a phone call came in. I mean, because I have it turned off, but you know how sometimes they do break through the matrix. But anyway, guys, $99. So, Chris, uh, I'll just tell you right now, like, I'm going to definitely, we'll run a campaign uh, to my big email list for this. And you and I, you know, we'll talk. You can give me, your people can give me copy or I can have my copywriter reach out to your people or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Great. I definitely, definitely want to push that to my audience. But, man, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Um, a lot was revealed. I'm grateful to have met you. I mean, you, like I said, you and I are going to talk off air, but I'll let you have the final thoughts. Yeah, no, listen, man, this is, uh, this has been a really special uh, opportunity. I, you know, I, I followed you for a long time. Um, you're somebody who I've, you know, looked up to and, and really have, have continued education, just learning from you as well. And, awesome. uh, was really honored to, to be a guest on the show. And also just, you know, for, for further conversations that we've had, just see more alignments, uh, yeah. between our, between our mindset, between our purpose and, uh, you know, I just really appreciate the time and, uh, you know, hope, uh, we've been able to touch some listeners today as well and, and, uh, give them an opportunity to just rethink the importance of, uh, self-care and, and just learning how to master their own bodies. So it's is, awesome, man. And, and by the way, received and reflected back and, uh, I'm grateful and humbled and privileged and honored to have you on the show. So you guys heard this amazing podcast today with Chris DeVecchio, um, please visit his website, which is christovecchio.com. Uh, check him out and follow him. Give him a follow on IG. And then of course, go to mobilitywall.com and purchase the mobility wall or don't and wait for me to send you an email to do it. And I'll just say, again, I'm grateful to have you here. Just for everybody in the audience, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. <laughs>